Frank Erickson was born in 1923 in Spokane, Washington. After serving in the Army Air Forces, he pursued a career in music, spending his time as a jazz arranger, composer, and trumpet player. Through his work, he became one of the foundational band composers, earning a particular fame for a piece called Air for Band. This evening concerts is focused on the idea of imagination. What does imagination sound like in music? We are starting off today with Mr. Erickson's imagination of a Viking village. Contrary to the popular image of Vikings as warriors, Mr. Erickson focuses his imagination on the Vikings' reputation as a proud country folk with deep knowledge of seafaring and farming. This is Land of the Vikings by Frank Erickson.
Our next piece, to Look Far, was written by Dr. James M. David for Wind Band. Dr. David is a professor of music theory and composition at Colorado State University and has written works for profe several professional ensembles, such as the United States Navy Band and the Des Moines Symphony Orchestra. Look Far is based on a small ship from a Wizard of Earthsea, a book series written by Ursula Leguin. In this piece, you will hear multiple different solos that depict the perilous journeys that, that Look Far has gone on. The piece ends with the little ship peacefully making its return to port before its next thrilling adventure. In the words of the composer, my short chorale is a loving tribute to little Lukvar and its lonely passenger, struggling to find his way in a sprawling sea filled with terrors, wonders, and joys. We hope you enjoy our performance of Lukvar by James David. Now, we will also welcome to the stage our student director, Mr. Nico, who will be conducting this piece.
Our next piece is written for band and electronic media called Hitchbot, written by Alex Tedrow. Tedrow is a young composer who primarily writes music that includes some sort of electronic media, such as a backing track, in order to put a fresh spin on traditional concert band music. Hitchbot is a, is a piece written about a robot named Hitchbot, developed by the McCaster University and Ryerson University that was designed to hitchhike acro across North America in order to determine if robots can trust humans. Hitchbot could not move on his own, so it depended on humans to help it travel across North America, and it was able to travel across a substantial portion of Canada and parts of the United States. Unfortunately, in 2015, once Hitchbot reached Philadelphia, it was found vandalized and decapitated, thus bringing Hitchbot's journey to an untimely end. This techno-Western-inspired piece depicts Hitchbot's journey across North America before abruptly ending as the robot meets its untimely demise. This piece starts with a brief electronic introduction from the backing track before the rest of the band joins in with it. We hope you enjoy Hitchbot by Alex Tedro. Thank you. 
band, we, the percussionists, are pleased to be playing a piece called Snoms. Snoms is a cadence composed by Chris Cockerell, who is an avid percussionist and educationalist. In 1990, he decided to pr pursue education, educational percussion literature, and soon after, his company Roloff Productions became the global publishing leader in percussion literature. Transitioning to the, to the piece noms. It includes six instruments, three snares and three toms. It is a fast-paced and intricate piece that the percussionists and I thoroughly enjoyed learning. Tonight, we will, be, we will be playing it in the dark with light up sticks as our cherry on top. That concludes my introduction of snoms. Please enjoy.
Rift and Wed is a piece written for concert band by Julie Giroux. Giroux is an American composer who, who began composing at the age of nine. She is very well known for her compositions for concert band, but she is also known for her work composing music for television and films, such as Karate Kid 2 and Dynasty. Rift and Wed is inspired by the award-winning video game Skyrim developed by Bethesda Game Studios. Skyrim is a massive action fantasy game that takes place in a beautiful world that features snow-covered mountains, lakes and oceans lined with sandy beaches, dense green forests, and numerous bustling cities and villages. However, it is also a land torn apart by civil war and dragons. Riften is a lawless waterfront city within Skyrim where citizens and you as the player go to get married. In this piece, you will hear the wedding and the marriage between two characters depicted through different themes throughout the band. Towards the very end of the piece, the composer depicts a scene where your partner in marriage unfortunately passes away, but never truly leaves you as you hear a faint sound resonating through the conclusion of the piece. As the composer writes in the program notes, Rift and Wit is the music for loves and unions, past and present such as this. A love, a wedding, a lifetime shared by two people in the middle of a storm that threatens to tear them apart. Where de till death do us part is not only a reality, it is a given. Where love is a gift worthy of all the joy and pain it demands. One life, one love, one ending. This music is for those that are truly rift and wed.
Our next piece is called Role Playing Game, and it was composed by Alexander Trevassos. Alexander Trevassos was born in 1970 in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. He studied clarinet and started out as a self-taught composer. He was later instructed by notable composers, including Ailton Escobar. He has composed more than 15 pieces which have been performed worldwide. Role Playing Game was composed in 2016 and premiered on March 10, 2018 with the Banda Sinfonica de Conservatorio de Tatui in Tatui, Brazil. It is a tribute to tabletop games like D&D, which combine role playing and storytelling. The point of these tabletop games isn't to win or lose, but to tell stories. This song has five themes and three main characters, which are the elf mage, the human warrior, and the halfling thief. In this song, you will follow these three characters as they journey through Alexander Trevasso's auditory world. There will be a party, then like every good story, a great battle wherein a necromancer is killed. The story ends in a tavern where Mr. Huseth has assured us all that the parties involved are of age to drink the beverages being served. This is one of the longest songs our band has played at a whopping 14 minutes. Now, roll the dice and get ready for our performance of role playing game conducted by our very own dungeon master, Mr. Kevin Huseth. <laughs>
Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Sorry, I just get so excited. It's not that often you can have a high school band that can tackle an 18-minute, like, very college-level piece of music like that. I am so stinking proud of these students. That was awesome. So, uh, these students, <coughs> excuse me, these students do not get to turn off for the next week because on Thursday, we will be going to Minneapolis to present our Keith Stacola works that we commissioned last week to basically the state of Minnesota, which is super exciting. And along the way, we're also going to have a clinic with Dr. Emily Rosen, or Emily Trinan, um, who is like the head honcho, big band director in the state of Minnesota, which I am super excited for. And then we might have a little bit of fun at the Mall of America. I don't know. Who cares? Um, <laughs> I know what they care about. Um, but a, a program with this much energy has a lot of people behind it, and there are a lot of people that I need to thank. Um, number one, our administration, Dr. Michael Carey, Steve Battaglia, who I saw tonight, Tim Perosin. Um, this takes some support from our administration to fund it, to make sure it gets scheduled, to encourage students to be in it, and it would not exist without that. So a huge thank you to them. Huge thank you to our teachers who lets me steal these students during the school day and get them to work so hard. Um, huge thank you to the parents and the community members and all of my music colleagues. There, it, just, it takes a village to make this stuff happen, and I just get to be the lucky one who stands in front of them on evenings like this. Also, a huge thank you to our fabulous student teacher, Mr. Parker Nicko. Parker, step out here one more time. He has been quite an exciting addition to our program for the last uh, several weeks and has a very bright future in front of him, which we are very excited for. So, anyways, with that, I am now going to turn it over to Presley to introduce our encore, as it were. Our next piece is called Bitscapes by Jennifer E. Rose. As a former music educator for over 15 years, Rose now primarily works as a composer, sound designer, and audio editor. She holds a master's degree and artistic certificate in composition and technology from North Carolina School of Arts, as well as a bachelor's degree in music from the University of Arkansas. Bitscapes is another piece that was written for concert band and electronic media. This piece is heavily influenced by the, in, by the bit, 8-bit video games from the 1970s and 80s. This piece begins with a backing track with some brief interjections from our tuba and percussion sections. As the piece progresses, more and more sections from the band are layered, adding to the rhythmic groove of the backing track. Bitscapes ends as it began, with each section dropping out until there is a lone soloist playing with the backtrack for the last five measures of the piece. Thank you all for coming, and we hope you enjoy Bitscapes by Jennifer E. Rose. Thank you. 
Before students run home, I do need your help striking the stage and moving everything to the band room. Thank you so very much. Oh, also, we need to extend a huge thank you to John and Trent and anybody else who's back there in the sound and booth. Thank you so much. Awesome. Have a fabulous evening. Thank you.